What I've seen makes you question humanity. There was a particular special uh, that was an expose that was addressing this issue. Children that were six and seven years old were being molested for money. That just kind of um, set us on a search to understand the issue and make a, ultimately a commitment that this was something that, you know, we were prepared to take on, even if it meant for the rest of our life. Child pornography is an issue that has evolved. By 1990 or so, we thought the problem had disappeared. And then came the internet. And with the internet, the problem exploded. Because of the communication that exists, uh, because of technology and the internet, you meet a stranger that has a similar interest to you, and next thing you know, you're sharing uh, content around that particular interest. Well, that might happen with cars, and that might happen with uh, hobbies, but it also happens with, with child pornography and human trafficking of underage children. In 2004, when the National Center was receiving reports of potential child pornography, the volume was approximately 450,000 files. Recently, that number has expanded, and we've now received over 17 million. The age of children is become increasingly younger, and it's more and more likely that individuals have not only child pornography, but child pornography with violent themes. The offenders in these kinds of crimes do not match society's stereotype. These are people who are part of our community. They have a craving to get more, and they want to share it with other people, and they create international and global networks of pedophiles sharing images of the people that they abuse. A lot of these networks are actually moving this kind of content and actually moving human beings for money. Pimps and traffickers no longer have to just, you know, work the street. They can just place an ad and sit back and have their customers come to them wherever they might be. People are posted and sold online multiple times a day. As far as the ad that was posted up, there was a girl who eerily, like, looked like me. That was the picture they put up there for me on the ad. Just how you can go find a car, it was a picture and a description and a price. The internet is being used for child sexual exploitation. And Thorne is the organization that said, let's go use technology and innovation to solve this issue. We have to stay on the front cutting edge of that technology because the criminals, they're on the front cutting edge. One of the first things that Demain Ashton did was they built a technology task force. And the whole idea is to bring the brightest minds in technology together to brainstorm around this issue. Microsoft and Facebook and Twitter and Google are competing every day in business, but they've all agreed to work together to find a solution to human trafficking and the sexual exploitation of children. A core set of our programs deals with deterrence in making sure that as people are engaging in activities that they're aware of the consequences of what they're doing and provide opportunities for help. Anything that can make child pornography more difficult to access, that makes people feel less anonymous online, that can have an impact. One of the most uh, extraordinary programs that we've been able to implement is what we call our Shared Hash Program. When one company finds a child abuse image on their network, they will report it to the National Center and they'll create a digital fingerprint of it and send it up to the cloud. And all the other participating companies can pull that fingerprint down and find that image on their network. And what this results in is more rapid identification and removal of this content across the internet and ideally will lead to quicker identification and rescue of these children. One of the partners we're working on with one of our programs is Polaris Project. They run the National Human Trafficking Hotline. The Be Free Tech short code is a, is a new short code. And the reason we launched it was we started receiving feedback from folks saying, why can't you receive texts? I would have texted you. 
I might not have been comfortable calling you because I didn't want to have someone overhear my conversation. But if I could have sent you a private silent text, I would have done that. We're already seeing examples of getting people out of modern day slavery because of this text short code. The challenge is there's a lot more that needs to be done. It's really impossible for law enforcement to deal with this issue alone. We can't arrest our way out of it. The more we get partners with this, the more that we share, the more it's, that it's unified, the greater opportunity we have. In this country, it is somewhat of an invisible issue, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist, and that doesn't mean it isn't someone's daughter, it isn't someone's sister. All you want to do is give them a hug and make them feel like it's okay. And you feel like you can't even give them a hug because that's the exact thing that stole a piece of their innocence away. The name Thorn itself has a beautiful connotation. Thorns protect the rose. And the rose here are our children and their futures.